Hey guys, time for 15 plus 10. And we are playing against a 1383 from Belgium who started with a Nimzovich Larsen attack. So this is clearly uh, signposting that they're going to fianchetto this bishop. So I'm going to play pawn to e5, anticipating the bishop's going to be on this diagonal, and then I'm going to defend the pawn. The king's pawn obviously is not automatically defended, as the queen's pawn is when it moves off. Okay, let's grab the center. Why not? This is attack once, defended once. Okay, they're now threatening the defender of the pawn in the style of the uh, Roy Lopez. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to defend the pawn again, this time again with development, by bringing out my bishop. If he wants to take, be my guest. Thirteen eighty-three. So this is a seven-nine game for me, and I am five hundred and sixty points off two thousand. Hehehe. <laughs> okay, we have attacker number two on this pawn. Notice that this knight is not a defender because it is pinned on the king. So we need to summon up more defense. F6 is an idea, particularly if I'm thinking about uh, long castling, which, which is not a bad idea. However, right now, if they take my knight and I recapture the B pawn, that means long castling is not so clever. Okay, so that puts a little bit of doubt over F6 with the, the general strategic question of where am I going to get my king to safety. Queen e7 also defends. I think that's absolutely fine. Queen e7 is fine. Um, we've now got basically bishop and queen are doing the defensive role. The knight is just in the way of the bishop. <clears throat> I might even kick that bishop. So my plan then still is probably knight f6, short castles, get the bishop out. All right, going after this pawn now is, is really, uh, really gunning, isn't he? Now I can counterattack here. The thing you have to mention it, remember is that it doesn't just finish with a counterattack, because what if they just take on d5? They're also then counterattacking my knight, which is a pain. So what do I want to do? Do I want to push the pawn? If I do, then that square is attacked three times and defended only once, actually, because remember the knight's still pinned. So that's less than ideal. Uh, for that reason, I mean, I could think about this, but the problem is that blocks off the queen's defense. So I'm thinking knight f6 is the only move that properly defends the pawn. Fortunately, it's also de a developing move, so happy days. You take that, I take with the knight. There's no other attackers. Um, to White's credit, they have captured towards the centre. But then I've centralised my knight. so, And I'm ready to castle. Oh, what? Okay, but the pawn is undefended there. Now it does mean that we've now only got one defender of this. So I'm thinking if knight takes, they've then got two attackers on my knight here. And I'll need to defend or break that. No. I've got this. I've got bishop d7. Hmm. So I felt like I could play this with quite, quite a straight bat, but... Okay. You threaten my knight. So, I mean, castles, knight takes, pawn takes, bishop takes. I just lose a pawn for no reason. I have to move my rook. Um, or it's queen here, queen here, or it's bishop d7. If bishop d7, there's the chance... I'm going to play bishop d7. Reason is, I could end up with pawns on light squares. I don't know. I don't know. We shall see. If they take with a knight, and I take with a queen, they might sack this. But long castles is then fine. Okay, I'm going to take with the queen. I'm going to take with the queen. And now look at the difference, right? They've, I've got four pieces out on the board. White really only has two. Um, I'm looking at long castles. Queen d6 may be a kind of just a safety move. 
I'm thinking probably more just kick the bishop. And if it wants to trade, I, I, I can still castle either way, actually. Perfectly fine. So we're doing all right there. Quite a tricky attack, though. Quite a tricky... Um... Okay, there we go. There we go. Now I have to take back with the pawn, so we know which way the king's going. And... You know, maybe white should have thought a little harder about this, because long castles for white is a no-no, in my opinion. So, but the, there's now a problem with short castles. The problem with short castles is, hello, you've just opened up the whole g-file. Just begging for rook g8. And maybe even queen h3, you know? So if, if the rook's on g8, and the king's here... Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, so he's doing a cheapo, having a look at this pawn. Now, I'm not sure that pawn is um, the be-all and end-all. I could play queen e6 and defend. Also defends the knight. Also queen d6 does the same. Doesn't really matter. Let's play queen e6. Queen's defending everything important. I'm getting ready to long castle, centralize my rooks, maybe on g and e. Don't know. It depends where this king's going to end up. But I re I'd love to see him short castle now. The opponent is playing jolly well. Considering 1383 as well. I wonder how many times this line has actually been reached in that Nimzovich Larsen line. Because the point is that they're fianchettoing the Queen's Bishop. You know, they, if they'd done the King's Bishop, this would be like a King's Indian attack. Bring the knight out. It's it's all very um, familiar. The queen's bishop one is is a tricky one. I don't know how how well I've done against this. Let's have a quick look while we're here. <clears throat> My games as black against this move. Okay. So with d5 and e5. We're kind of balanced. White does a little better. F6, I've played a couple of times. Hmm. But yeah, D5, E5. This is pretty normal. This is what you would expect from... Uh... Oops, where are we? Here we are. I've got one kidney that needs to go outside. It's gone and hid. Gone and hid. And okay. Right, they've developed a knight. Notice this pawn is pinned. I, I do actually have this move if I want it. The pawn cannot legally take because it's in an absolute pin. Um, they've got two attacks on here. I mean, Long Castle sorts out that, that issue. Minor issue. Otherwise, knight can't go there, can't go there. I think long castles. It's what I wanted to do anyway. Time to kick the bishop. There's no dark squared bishop, so weakening the dark square there isn't a, a biggie. I can always even drop my own bishop back to a7 with eyes on g1, assuming white goes that away. If white goes that away, here yeah, I don't know. I mean, bishop a3 would, would actually stop that idea. Well, I'm trying to let you out, but you then keep running away. Come on, then. Come on, let's get you. Got the bugger. Got him. And now he's gone outside to play in the sunshine with his brothers and sisters. This is interesting game. Okay, well... That answers one question. Now, so is the idea eyeing up my undefended bishop? I could just drop the bishop back to b6. Another idea could be to put the bishop here and force the rook to move. See, this is a semi-open file for white. Um, plus, my king is on that file. So I'm, think I'm thinking dropping the bishop back, because if I go here, he's just going to play like rook forward to c2. 
What's the point in that? Or I could drop back here, actually, and defend the pawn this way. Either square. They're both kind of good. This one's lined up with g1. This one's lined up with h2. Or I could just up the ante and say, oh, I quite like that, actually. I quite like that. Hit the queen. Then if I can encourage the bishop to disappear. Is it going to go there or there? I think we have to find out. I'm going to kick the bish. So I kick the bish. Has he got... Can he move this knight with a threat? I don't think he can. So I'm seeing if he can, you know, up the danger levels on me there. Or if I move my knight first, where's the queen going to go? If the queen goes there, then I kick the bish, and the bishop's got to retreat that way. And then that falls to this. You see, I'm playing with the move order now, right? If I kick the bishop now, bishop could retreat here. Okay? Then I hit the queen, and the queen slides sideways. So I'm going to hit the queen first. Yep, this is def sorry, this is defended twice. That's fine. Then even c6 actually might be a good way to hit the bishop. I don't know. Got two two kicks. Right, now the bishop can't go to that square. You see. Now if I kick the bishop, I kick. He can go here, but not there and not there okay so he's got this and he's got that or, or that but he's not going to go back to f1 problem is this square because of the arrangement of this rook having moved the rook to c1 now it's in forking range of my knight and there we go so my plan may have started to hatch. Only problem is now, actually, the queen defends that square, of course. But I'm thinking now, I'm thinking c6. c6 looks really good. If the bishop goes there, I've got the option of taking with the knight, but I think I might just leave it. Big issue for white now is this king's still not castled on move 14. And there's this open G file. Might do I want to think about getting rid of this pawn? Pawn takes here. We trade queens, and um, that's no bad thing for me. Materials equal right now. I've got a, a safer position. Having said that, that I am on a semi-open file. King is on a semi-open file. So I could I could maybe slide the king to b8 at some point, but I don't think there's any reason to do that right now. Big question is if the bishop goes there, am I gonna swap swap it off? Oh Oh you have, have you? Right. So if I was to take and they was to take. And so I take back the pawn, and queen takes my pawn. There is a lot of danger against this bishop with this pawn missing. So I don't think I want to go down that route at this point in time. I have this. This is a possibility. It could get kicked. In which case, it kind of has to come back to here. There kicks... Hmm. Do I just want to retreat, maybe? Maybe even swing around that way. I think I'm going to have to. Do I want to bring one of my rooks? I think maybe rook d, e8. Then I can push here. Attacking the knight, attacking the pawn. That is the general principle when your opponent's king isn't castled. Okay, there we go. And that bishop is, is not improved, I don't think, by that move. So I'm threatening this. 
Porn sex now isn't possible. Oh, it, yeah, kind of is. Kind of is. There, pawn takes, bishop takes, and then castling is now an impossibility for, for white. Pawn takes, bishop takes. We could end up trading queens, and then you're in check. And then, what are you going to do? There, pawn takes, bishop takes. So there's no pawn on d5. Tradeth. I might, might even recapture the pawn, actually, though. Because right now, these two doubled isolated pawns can't achieve an awful lot because they're going to run into that f4 pawn. Definitely got possibilities here. But this is not a any kind of a walkover, this game, at all. At all. So I've got no real good pawn breaks with these pawns, that's the issue. So what, what I want to be doing is I want to be throwing pawns at this position and just kind of clearing out junk from the middle of the board to expose this guy. He's thought for over a minute now. There's nothing here. Dropping the bishop back is, it's not, I mean, it's the thing. It, it gives my knight the c5 square. Then it could come in here even. So maybe even push. That shuts down this bishop. I think the more pawns I can get on light squares at this point in the game, the, the more I'm constraining that bishop without constraining my own, because my own can just zip through the gaps. The problem with this is that it's defended only by the queen. Okay. I have this hitting the rook. I have this that could get itself kicked again. I could just not drop back. How do we feel about this move? Let's think it through. If knight takes, I have pawn takes, I also have knight takes. Here, knight takes and pawn takes. I'm pretty solid on the light squares, aren't I? And I'm not really scared of this rook either. Is Which is the best piece? That's the question. If I hit the rook, the rook will just like come here, I think. I can always just slide there. Also protects this square if I want to move my knight there. Hmm. Lots of decisions. I can hit the rook and see what the rook does. Let's hit the rook and see what it does. So my opponent's... Um, Previous moves have been a minute 50, 50 seconds, 50 seconds, 55 seconds, 22, and then 2 minutes 11. Right? At that speed, he's going to run out of time and find himself in a scramble. I have a minute and a half advantage on the clock right now. But that is not what I'm going to rely on. I'm not sure I like this very much. But knight can't go to this square. That's out. There we go. This is what we thought would happen. Okay, I know. I now have this, and the pawn can't kick me away because I just take it. But is there a stronger move? This is one move we should consider, sir. Right. So if I if I play b5, knight can't go there. That's out. He can't go there because I'm attacking that now twice with bishop and knight. Okay, so here, no, no. It's he's going to have to retreat, but I'm rip. But then I'm squashing down on the on the light squares as well, making life really tough for this bishop. I don't know. Do you know what? I'm going to play a wussy move. I'm just going to move the knight out of the way. Just remove any any ideas of this. 
Um, so this isn't possible right now. So yeah, that last move was 43 for, seconds for him, 44 for me. So I would like to complicate things if I can. Maybe just simply doubling up on the G file. Maybe something as crude as that. Double, even just like double my rooks, target this, maybe try and get it to move forward. Sneak in, don't know. Sneak in, rook takes G3, you can't recapture because of this. Something like that. So I'm now two minutes up on the clock. There we go. Complications is what we want. So he's got th he's got this idea right now. If I do that, he takes. So I'm just going to do this. You've got that. You can have that. I'll just move my queen aside, recapture the knight. No worries. I can also take that pawn for free. Obviously not if you put the bishop there. But it feels like one of those gritty games. I had a really interesting over the board match last night, by the way. Um, I don't think I'm going to make a video of it. It, 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 was, it was a very interesting game. We, we came out around 70 accuracy each. My opponent was a bit older than me, um, but more experienced player called Patrick, Belgian guy who I actually know because uh, we used to play badminton together years ago. Um, huh. This pawn's pinned, we note. Okay. And uh, he played d4, and I went into a Charlick. Um, but he played a very slow response to it. He, he played like a3 and h3 in the first 10 moves and stuff. Um, I ended up really trying to push my advantage in, in, in the center um, and try and get lots of initiative. Um, <clears throat> oh, right. Well, I wanted to do that anyway. Um, yeah, it's a fascinating game. So I ended up two pawns down for a lot of the game, a lot of the middle game. Um, then managed to win my two pawns back and even went a pawn in front. But he ended up, um, oh, I mean, it's, it's quite, maybe, maybe I'll have to do a video for you guys on it. Maybe I will. I don't know. I don't know. Right then. I just do this, go straight in for the attack. Pawn can't take. If pawn pushes, what happens? Bishop's defending this, but so is the queen. Do it. Could work. Let's try it. If knight takes, I have bishop takes, and then we've got a lot of guns pointing there. Even something like bishop back to here and capturing that, maybe. Five and a half minutes. My pawn down. So what did I miss there? That was just... I just undefended my own piece. Simple as. I failed to spot that it was attacked. I saw that. And he went, well, I might as well go in anyway. I've got a free pawn, haven't I? There we go. Okay. We have a check. Let's do it. Now there's no blocking, so that king is moving. I like to move it, move it. Uh, the, the, no. He's, do, he's done a good job of actually upsetting my pawns here. But he is on five minutes. Patrick is also Belgian. See, the disadvantage now of the king being stuck in the middle of the board is not so pronounced. Uh, 
think I need to engage my bishop. My queen's... Is my queen in a good position? Do I need to bring my bishop around the long way? Maybe. To here. He's done good, though. The boy. Tribule de. Having said that, maybe Flemish speaking, so I don't know. Don't know what two is in Flemish. Four minutes twenty, though. How are you going to break through? This pawn is handled with a sacrificial f6 pawn. He's taking his time, though. Last moves 19, 17, 16, and 34. And this is longer again. About queen e7 bishop here. Okay, I think we double up. Always stick my rook there. So we had a really interesting position in the end game as well, because um, we had a quality. Like it was, it was looking at the um, eval, it was it was drawn, 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 and then there were some some of the, the most subtle move differences that gave him the win in the end. Um, with a very nice checkmate with uh, king, pawn, and knight. And my king stuck on the back rank. But I feel like I need to understand what it was about that endgame and why it was lost before I can really discuss it, because at the moment I'm just baffled. Okay, so what am I thinking? Something like queen here, maybe. Just to protect the back rank a bit more. Bishop to here, and then that pawn hangs. So that's my kind of default right now. I can't see any major weakness there. Okay, uh, you've made my mind up. I could have taken the pawn, actually. Why didn't I just take the pawn? <coughs> well, apart from... Yeah, it kind of opens me up to a rook, though, doesn't it? Hmm... Still queen d8 and the threat of this, because this pawn is pinned. That's the plan, man. But he is up a pawn. And I've spectacularly failed to capitalise. Okay, you've got to spot this now. And I'm starting to move quickly, but with pre-prepared non-mistakes, hopefully. That's the idea. To put the pressure back on him, because he's in time trouble now, on 2 minutes 20. And there's a player who likes to spend a reasonable amount of time in his moves. Probably not... Uh, a keen blitz player. Hopefully we can use that to our advantage. The clock is part of the game, for sure. Okay, well now I can take the pawn for free, because it's still pinned, I still win the queen. You cannot capture. And that kind of helps. We've now disconnected these pawns, which means that if g5 is ever played, I can eradicate that. I only have to worry about this. And maybe bishop here. Maybe. Obviously, I'm not threatening to take on here because he's got rook takes, then queen, then rook. So that's not the plan. But bishop g5, even bishop h4 would be lush. If I can get bishop h4 in... In fact, <laughs> that, that just wins material immediately if I can do that. He can defend it with queen here or just moving the king out of the way. But this, the, what I really like about it, is it blocks off the A-pawn. Sorry, the H-pawn. Okay, you did it. Right, but I can still threaten that. Oh, it comes a check, does it? You are quite correct. 
So rook h8, bishop h4 wins. Are you going to push the pawn? This is well defended, defended four times, but the moment it moves, it's not. The moment it moves forwards, it's defended once and attacked. So this pawn really is glued to the spot. Okay, so this is kind of forced. Rook h8 can come. This. Maybe drop this rook back. Bishop's going to swing around, something like that. If he does this immediately, that's, there's no worries. Right? If he pushes this, there's no worries. I can stick my bishop on g5 and block him off. One minute, two. One minute, one. One minute. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, he's just trying anything now. Um, um, I'm not worried. What do we do? What do we do? Queen there takes, takes. He can't attack the queen with his rook. A queen is not particularly useful there, though. This proposes a trade of queens. How do we feel about that? He's got two attackers on there, though. Let's do this, then. If it takes, rook takes. Okay. Well, that's absolutely fine. I'm sure that's fine. I'm sure that's fine. This rook can't come round as things stand. This pawn is not a major threat. I can always just uh, bypass it. Uh, my rook is defended. Probably bring my rook over to here. Threatening to capture this pawn as well. No, no, not really. Okay. You do that. I'm just, in fact, let's move the king up. He's now having to move quickly, right? He is keeping his time around the one minute mark. But you push that and I push by. And then my king blocks the pawn, using it as a human shield. And we're, you know, we're all done. Everything is defending e3. Apart from that bishop that can't. I'm attacking it twice, but it's defended four times. No fewer than four, I tell you. Okay, I can still offer a trade of queens, and I'm still fairly comfortable. He's down to 36 seconds now. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know how to proceed. You push again, I push again. And the thing is, there is nothing more powerful in defensive terms than your own piece. That's the problem. You know, because there's no white has no piece that's strong enough to capture his own pawn. Doesn't matter. Doesn't does not matter, mate. Okay, um, three defenders on on there now. I'm going to propose a trade of queens. Right, make him think. You got nothing. Now either rook to the e-file, I'm threatening this. Still, th oh, okay, it's defended twice. So we play this rook over. Okay, he's pushed a pawn. I think we simply capture. He needs to open up the board. Okay, now he's attacking this. I think we simply defend. <sighs> That's um, got to defend this pawn, haven't I? I'm actually a pawn up, and I'm not worried about these guys. This G pawn can't do anything. All right. Okay. All 
Right, so what I'm threatening here is a discovery against this rook. How can I make it stick? This. Pinning the bishop. So this rook's undefended, so that bishop now can't capture this pawn. That might have been an option before, actually, but he's got to notice this as well. I'm just trying to complicate matters now, but it's by no means in a comfortable position. My advantage is he's on 45 seconds again. Got a note. Okay. Oh, you bugger. That doesn't work though. I capture this rook. If you take me, this one still hangs. That's your problem. And that, I think, is relatively losing. F still handles G-pawn. And I've got a bishop here that can cover the promotion square. Okay. Well, th that is just dead lost. Dead lost now. Whoa. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Good game. Well done. Well, what do you think we did on that? Seventy one. Okay, seventy accuracy is not bad for me at the moment. Um thirteen fifty, yeah, that was not my best and a whole heap of errors there. Whole heap of errors. No blunders on my part. But six miss misses and they're 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 basically blunders. I don't know why chess.com Oh cut myself, isn't I? Um, differentiates between misses and blunders because they, it's like they're as bad as each other. But um, yeah, I'm glad to get it in the end. He wants to play again. Un oh no, that's Alexi. Um, hmm. The opening. Let's uh, let's just whiz through. Let's just whiz through and see what the. Because if you don't see what you miss, then. Queen e7 is okay. It's a better move to defend this pawn. Okay. Yeah, and then, you know, we have knight g e7. That's all viable too. Wow, castle's there, huh? Material was equal. And I mean, Castles is also a developing move, which also gets out of this bishop pin. I didn't even consider it, I don't think. Okay. And these two pawns were a bit of a pain, weren't they? For the rest of the game. And white is slightly better here. Best move. Castles. Forget about the pawn. Right, okay. And that's great, okay. Rook c1 is a mistake. Knight e5 is excellent. And that was not the way. I'm threatening to win a rook. I don't know how you see that fish. I really don't. Striking in the center. I got distracted by ideas of annoying this bishop and forgot to go for what really mattered, which is this fork. Yeah, I get that. I do get that. Now I retreat. That's a mistake. Yeah, getting the king onto a dark square, because he's only got a light squared bishop. It's an opposite colored bishop game. And also getting off the C file where there's a lurking rook. That makes sense to me. That's okay. Now I play that move and now it's yeah, it's alright. Okay. So this is what I missed. Yeah, I think that that was a clear mistake. Um Yeah. I I just didn't consider what could my opponent do here. Now 
given away an advantage again. Tricky one. And it's still plus two for white, and this is a blunder. Oh, I could have just taken it. Because its defender is pinned by the rook. Yeah, with the rook. Oi, oi, oi. Come on, hunty. I bet I played that move too quickly, too. Reconnect the rooks. This is all right, but... Okay, bold move. Yeah, and again, just play too quick. Didn't do the basics, didn't say what's on the board, you know, what's the situation. That pawn was hanging, could have just grabbed it. So it's plus three now for white, but that's a mistake. Because of this, yeah. And now it's less than plus one in white's favour. Oh, that's an interesting move. See, I was never worried about this corner. This corner, I, I was pretty sure I had that handled. And now it's a dead draw. That's a blunder. Oh. Yeah, I could have... I, I had two attackers, look. Could have just took it. But... My, my priority here was... So that's inaccurate. Yeah. That's a fishy move. <coughs> fishy moves. I think that's what we should call them. A move that, that Stockfish finds, but that humans would go, what? And that's a mistake. Could I, I, I'm, I'm not interested in pushing these pawns up at all. But also, remember that, that Stockfish hasn't got a clue about um, time and time trouble and anything like that. It was a really nice but hard to find move. Okay, so that's basically two pawns and a bishop for a, a rook. So what was better than that? Counter-attacking again. Okay, that's a mistake. And that is a missed win. So he should have done... Simply that. But remember, he's got a minute on the clock. And that's the kind of thing that I appreciate that he doesn't. There was a better way. And the more aggressive move was that. Okay, but I'm also playing psychology here, you know. I'm wanting to put pressure. I want him to have to think about, oh, my bishop's actually pinned because that rook's undefended. Oh, no, what do I do? I'll counterattack his rook, you know what I mean? And then that was the decisive blunder because I think he missed that. And that's just game over. There you go. But look, a win is a win is a win. Fishy moves aside, I'm quite quite proud of it. It's not my best performance, but... Um, it's a win, so I'll take it and move forward. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you later.